Guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be, I'm actually, special thanks uh, to, I think it was, I think these were the replays that were sent out. If you actually subscribe to the BSL Patreon, they will get you replays such as these. This is from the Continental Wars. I believe this is EU versus South America. So we've got uh, Peru versus Hungary in this instance. Siki, bottom left-hand corner, as our uh, Hungarian Zerg. He ended up taking fourth place last season, BSL 13. Look for him to be in this upcoming season of BSL. Gosu Dark ended up getting eliminated in the round of 16. He is the pink Protoss upper right. These are two amazing, really high level players, top foreigners out there. This is on Vertebrae, which almost reminds me of Destination. If you guys remember that map from way back in the day, you've got the natural expansion, which has pretty wide choke, which feels like it, I don't know, you kind of need a lot of area. It feels like 973 could be a thing on this map. And you also have a very distanced third base. I feel like this is almost Zerg favored the way it, because you've got kind of just that ramp. Uh, you have dual ramps, but it's just kind of smaller ramps on one side of the map to deal with. That's the 12 o'clock location, 3 o'clock location, I think ends up being the third that's taken more often, but it's kind of like, yeah, and it's a little bit easier to defend because you kind of have smaller chokes, but it's still uh, a distance away and I don't know. We'll see how this map ends up playing out over time. And you also, I, sh I should reveal map again the middle of the map this has become a popular feature we saw this on turbine and i'm not sure why this is such a popular thing for a lot of the map makers recently but having kind of these wide maps where you just kind of have a sliver of high ground advantage across the middle of the map and kind of define uh, divides things and also the tracy's armory has been a big thing I'm wondering if that's like a inside joke in the map maker maker community or and if it's not maybe it became now goes to dark running in it's going to go ahead and see what looks like is going to be an overpool Probe got an initial amount of minerals. Is he going to drop a pylon at that natural expansion? Just do some disruption here. That you have two drones trying to pull out there, waiting on that, that spawning pool. Not quite finished. I think we're going to see the full six zerglings. We are seeing a forge first on the opposite side of the map from Gosu Dark. And while that probe is out of position, that hatchery being planted down. It looks like only two zerglings initially with the timing of that hatchery and drones after it. I almost actually feel like these days, the way the meta, because I feel like the advantage for Zerg is if you can kill, you just end up having a much, 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 much more success if you can kill this early probe scout and put your opponent in the dark, cannon uh, being warped in. Actually, a bit unnecessary because it's only two Zerglings. Maybe didn't get, was feeling a little uncomfortable because of eyes on that front, uh, front position. But we are seeing a cannon Nexus gateway here in that back corner. But yeah, I almost feel like it's opening up nine pool or at least opening up over pool with additional Zerglings might be more favorable just at large. Already grabbing that nine o'clock base. Man, this almost feels like it's uh, accelerated. Very, very fast third hatchery. Strapped or warping in, no additional Zerglings. So just the initial two Zerglings. Overlord is camping out on that front door to go ahead and spot everything at that corner. So yeah, this is the third hatchery before that natural expansion's even up. And the Zergling's trying to chase down. But yeah, I feel like because of the meta these days, it's vitally important, one, for the Protoss to keep this probe scout alive, to just see what your opponent's doing. Because if you can keep if you can see whether it's three hatch mutalisk, or at least three hatch layer, and moving back to the, the four hatch, you can get a lot more accomplished as far as your build order. But the Zerg's advantage is if you can kill this initial probe and put your opponent in the dark, there's just so much you can do to abuse it. So now Ghost of Dark seeing that lair morphing in. Looks like he's still going to hang out. This is at least indicate. I think this is more indication towards potentially three hatch mulus, but I believe the current meta is just go ahead and grab that fourth hatchery. Ghost of Dark doing a fantastic job of keeping this probe alive, just kind of putting on a clinic right there. One assimilator up, Cybernetic score warping in. No second gas, so I believe he's just going to try to play the after Stargate, uh, kind of Stargate, four gateway into potentially a Zealot timing. As far as a follow-up, that probe going to go ahead and back out. Maybe hunting for that third base, not finding it there, might cycle back to that 9 o'clock location and should find it. Some additional Zerglings now out, actually flooding out for Zeke. Want to take this probe scout out. Looks like they are able to do so. <clears throat> So now that the Slayer's finished, we'll see if we do see a dedication to Spire and the Mutalisks. Stargate Citadel of Adun in the background. No additional gas, though, which suggests, again, it is still going to just be more that zealot, uh, that zealot play. What I've liked seeing recently out of Protoss players, 
is actually Corsairs up in the air. It looks like we are seeing that fourth hatchery with the Spire. Is seeing additional Corsairs. Kind of the... I, I think we saw it out of Dreamer, out of one of his, his early replays. And I, f I feel like that's what's going to end up being current meta. Is several Corsairs being produced to protect the High Templar. And kind of deny vision on the front. And getting a Dark Templar on the front to kind of disrupt any sort of bust in between all of that. And also just utilizing those Corsairs to deny vision to the Zerg opponent in the mid game, which makes it, which forces them to use more larva uh, to build more units to defend more territory if they are sneaking back into that five hatch hide replay. Uh, and we'll see if that ends up kind of catching on, but I think that's what the meta is going to settle down into. We'll have to see as there's a continuation in BSL Season 13. Second gateway at the natural expansion, some Zelts being built, level one weapons uh, not being upgraded on the front. So a skip of level one weapons, and I'm wondering if that's a mistake from Ghostly Dark. He's got the initial, maybe he's just waiting to see what he's up against. Fourth hatchery, fifth hatchery in location. So it's actually five hatch mutalisk. Corsair spotting the various hatcheries. It looks like it's going to try to go ahead and do some damage to this overlord. But what this allows, this is actually going to play pretty well for Ziki because the mutalisks in sufficient numbers can take care of though especially if they can get on top of those zealots and maintain air control they can really pin your protoss opponent back initial scourge out are they going to be able to get a corsair one scourge lands second scourge is going to be training it looks like this corsair is going to be able to exit the zealots now moving out level one weapon or sorry the leg speed is going to finish but keep in mind no level one weapons this is four zealots this is without a Hydralis Den, this is going to force some Zerglings to be produced. Looks like a Creep Colony is trying to go up that 9 o'clock location. I do not believe that's going to be in time. But the Mutalisks trying to engage here at that 9 o'clock. But this is not sufficient Mutalisks to take this out. So these drones, certainly several drones going to be wiped out. More Zerglings marching in. The drones trying to exit. Now, on top of the Zealots. But actually a really nice defense by Zeki overall. So a bit of economic disruption, but not a lot of drones killed. The hatchery lost a bit of health, but not much else. And the Mutalisk count continues to grow. Hydroden is there. No Hydralisks out in the field. Looks like speed is being upgraded. So Ziki potentially going to turn this back into a contain. And that can be very abusive on this map, considering how, how many pockets there are. You can see just kind of areas where Hydralisks can get can just kind of stutter step and then get in little piles here and force cells into smaller numbers and to be assailed by larger uh, counts of units. I do like the five Corsair count being built and wep level one weapons being grabbed. We do have a Templar archives, but High Templar being produced rather than Dark Templar. N I don't think Psy Storm is upgraded yet. I might have missed it. Ziki just macroing behind this, getting Phenomenized Carapace. Looks like he is going to roll back to some form of hiveless build because the evolution chamber going for spines one <clears throat> so definitely wants to roll this back into some sort of potential mutilus container at least uh multiple what is it where are we at as far as the hatchery count six so there's five yeah six six hatch hydra mutilus engaging the corsairs the corsair is able to chew into them and it looks like I think they were able to dodge pretty much all of the Scourge. There's also an Archon that was morphed on the front. Two Archons being morphed on the front. This is an interesting play from Ghostly Dark. Is he going to move out with these Archons? Is he just going to do an Archon Zealot move out? And try to force a lot of Zerglings? Interesting. And a Battle Probe initially. We'll see how this plays out. So Archons should be able to protect these Zealots. This is going to force a lot of Hydralisks. Or... If there aren't enough units, uh, I'm, I'm curious what this is going to accomplish. So Overlord down. That's putting Ziki in the red. Another Overlord looks like it's getting pressed. The Hydralists are engaging, just bunching up, grouping up. The Mutalists there as well. And I think Ziki just has overwhelming attack forces to defend this. This has allowed the Corsairs to pick off a couple Overlords. Corsairs regrouping with those Mutalists. But pretty well defended overall. And that was a lot of army. That was a lot of gas to lose. So that was two Archons. Is this Archon? I think this was the third Archon. Now trying to escape. 
moving out and checking that 3 o'clock location, but honestly, I don't know how how well Ghost of Dark is going to be able to take that. Also, keep in mind, as far as upgrade advantage, no level one up and still from Ghost of Dark. He's been skipping upgrades out of this corner. Some Hydralisks grouping up, now moving to potentially go for a contain, but with those overlords out of the air, these zealots are going to be able to sneak around. Might be able to get something accomplished. The Hydralisks with those Zelts out of position, starting to press, and that Ghosty Dark calling GG, actually. Good call. Zelts out of position. Psy Storm still not finished. He just didn't have enough to defend this natural expansion. So Zeki, able to pull the win there. But look for both of these guys in the upcoming season of BSL Season 13. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Glad to highlight some, uh, I guess, European and South Americans. By the way, if you are European or South American and you are in the scene, and you have replays, and you're participating in BSL, please get them to me, because I really want to highlight, I feel like I've done a good job of highlighting North America, and a handful of top level guys uh, otherwise, but I really want to highlight also the Europeans and South Americans out there, other participants in BSL. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.